I'm Xavier Richardson. I grew up in Fredericksburg, uh, more specifically, grew up in Mayfield, which was an all black neighborhood. It was awesome growing up with Xavier. Um, he was a few year, couple years older than me. He always looked out for me and still does look out for me. We, we didn't have a lot, but everybody seemed to help each other. And so I think he saw that spirit of helping, and I think that grew into him. Back then, African Americans didn't have the opportunities that we have now relative to going to school, which I think has been instrumental in my motivation to go to school because my mother was second only to a uh, DC Superior Court judge. She was a very bright woman. She constantly motivated us to excel academically, as did my father. He only spoke positivity into me. This is my son going to be the judge. My son is going to be a doctor, whatever. My father, okay, he always said that Xavier would be the first African-American U.S. president, okay? And all through school, Xavier was always the top of the class. Uh, and my early schooling was in a segregated school, Walker Grant, uh, which is now called the original Walker Grant. Going to school in a segregated school uh, for the first grades of grades one through five, actually it was a great experience. We didn't have all of the physical uh, equipment and supplies. We didn't have the physical structure, but we did have a strong teachers who took a real keen interest in our successes. And uh, they would sacrifice personally to make sure that we had what we needed. In the sixth grade, I went to uh, a desegregated school I brought my yearbook. It's called Memories of Mari, 1969. Um, it was a wonderful record of the first year that the Fredericksburg schools were desegregated. This is Jeanette, me, in sixth grade at Mari School. And here is my new friend, Xavier. We just hit it off as friends from day one, and we've maintained that friendship all these years. And I found his intellectual spark just something that I could feed off of and, and did. And even as a, as a youth, even in sixth grade, you know, he was just pushing the envelope. He had a vision, and he really pursued that vision. He was very smart from the beginning. In fact, one of his teachers said that she thought that he might be a near genius. And, and one thing about him as a child, I noticed he had such bright eyes, big bright eyes, and I think that was a, uh, an omen for what he was going to become, a bright scholar and a bright leader. I went on from there back to Walker Grant to middle school, um, had a great experience there, and then had a great experience in high school. I had the opportunity to go to Brazil as an exchange student that summer. 
And one of his classmates came and, um, and said, Xavier's not going to be an exchange student. Now he's going to stay home and work. He didn't have the money. And I said, can your grandfather help you? No, ma'am. And I said then, if I get the money for you, will you be allowed to go to be an exchange student? Yes, ma'am. I got the money. And he went to Brazil. It comes up senior year. His government teacher, Mr. Rick Hall, came to my office and said... And I said, you know, Xavier could go to Princeton if, if, if you want to talk to him. Well, obviously she did. We talked about it. Xavier said yes, he would go to Princeton. And she and I composed an introductory letter. And we laid out Xavier's credentials and skills, and he got accepted, and I think Princeton came through with a pretty good package. Uh, we did our best to see to it that he, he got there. There's one teacher who didn't realize that she said this. Uh, she said to another teacher in a teacher's lounge, well, we see that he got in, we'll see whether or not he survives. And I remember hearing that, and I will never forget that statement. It motivated me when I got to college, where if I ever thought about giving up, I, I remembered two voices. The voice said, that's the voice said on one shoulder said, we'll see whether or not he survives. The other voice I heard of all the people in my community who supported me, and I say my community, I mean my community, the Fredericksburg community. There I also became aware of the Master of Business Administration program at Harvard Business, Business School. And I said, well, this sounds like something that might be of interest to me. While I was at Harvard, um, it was a very competitive environment. And, but at that time, I was saying, Lord, if you get me through this, I promise you, I promise you, <laughs> thy will be done. Not my will, but thy will be done. All too often, we talk about what we want to do, but I knew that if I were to succeed, that I would have to do what I was called to do, never knowing what it was that uh, I was called to do. Uh, we moved to New York because I was working on Wall Street, and uh, it was a great experience, uh, but my kids were going to, my children were going to a school where a lot of wealthy children were attending, and so they had an imbalanced perspective on what life was like. So with the infinite wisdom of my wife, she said, we need to go to a church in Harlem so that our children will have an opportunity to see a diverse, you know, see diverse perspectives. And so we went, we joined uh, Canaan Baptist Church where YT, Dr. Y.T. Walker was a pastor, and uh, this man was a very wise man. He was special assistant to Dr. Martin Luther King. He's also in Malcolm Gladwell's uh, book, David versus Goliath, as just a, a, a wise man, a whole chapter on him. Now, if you pull into a situation and you hear the beat and you don't know what the program is, I tell people, watch the direction of the shout. If it's up and down, it's religious. If it's from side to side, it's secular. My husband was looking for a dean of youth, but Xavier didn't know that. And my husband called Xavier and said he wanted to talk to him. So he said to me, Xavier, you know, you uh, have two Ivy League degrees and you're working on Wall Street. Have you ever considered uh, being an officer of the church? And Xavier said he thought he wanted him to be on the finance committee or a trustee or something like that. But he asked him to be dean of youth. I said, dean of youth? I said, what does the dean of youth do? He told me how you were responsible for about 200, 250 inner city Harlem teenagers um, in terms of their spirituality, uh, their academic success, their um, mental health services, their family life and everything. And I said to myself, teenagers, I don't even know if I'll hit teen. Then before I could finish, I remembered, thy will be done, that promise that I had made, that if I got out of the, out of Harvard, and I was able to do well, 
then thy will would be done. I said, okay, Lord, I guess you have a sense of humor if you're asking me to be the dean of youth. And there I learned about answering a calling. And I just watched how he acclimated himself to the New York environment and to really making a difference in that particular opportunity. And that really exemplifies Xavier. He takes whatever opportunity it is and makes something out of it. I always remember obedience is better than sacrifice, so I decided I would do it. And what I learned from that experience is that if you are called to do something in life the way I was called, the one who called me does not call anyone to fail, but he calls them to succeed. So he equipped me with what I needed. He equipped me with an ability to work with young people. He gave me certain gifts and talents I never had before. And I found that I had a love for it. And so I've learned that if when you submit to your calling, you don't worry about what you're giving up. Because whatever you give up is small in comparison to what you gain. And he was such a good dean of youth for our young people and such a fine example. In fact, the whole family was a good example for other children and other people. The decision to come back home, quite honestly, was not all mine. My wife uh, was ready to leave New York. She was saying, this is not the place to raise our kids. We are to go back home. And I said, but no, there are great opportunities. They're going to one of the best schools. You're working in a great school. And uh, I think she quietly prayed about it. And uh, suddenly... This is the Nightly Business Report. Good evening, everyone. The law of gravity hit Wall Street today and financial markets around the world, for that matter, as stock prices plunged even more than they did on Black Tuesday of 1929. There was a stock market crash. And I, in retrospect, really believe that she prayed up that stock market crash because she always believed that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. And Lord knows, she was a praying woman. We made the decision. Maybe you made a decision, but the decision was made that uh, we would come back home. got here. I called a, a meeting of some of the professionals, young professionals, who had been in our school system that I had worked with previously. I told them that I was too old to do all the stuff I had been doing, <laughs> and I needed them to take over and work with children in the school system get them ready for high school, get them ready for college. About three weeks later, Xavier called a meeting at his own church, Shalom New Site. He had about 25 or, or more people there. And that night he announced to them, this is going to be the Partnership for Academic Excellence. Partnership for Academic Excellence was such a fitting name for Xavier's organization because I sincerely felt as though I had a true partner in the mission to accomplish my goal of getting into college. On my applications, I had to list my favorite quote. I thought it was a good idea to put my favorite mid-90s rap lyric. When Xavier reviewed my application, he wisely changed the answer to a quote attributed to John F. Kennedy. For those to whom much is given, much is required. He kept doing things, he kept talking to me, he helped me along the way see that I can do more, I can be more, I can do better, I can be better. And he kind of like encouraged me to want to um, be something. Really appreciated the fact that, that we had someone like him in the community that was able to connect with our young youth the way he did. For my background, for me coming as a refugee, um, you know, now we knowing um, 
how to navigate the uh, education of, of the United States of America. So him saying that, hey, you might take this uh, SAT prep classes in which he, o- he offered through his program, as well as uh, speaking to my parents about the different options that I had, it was really, uh, very, uh, I'm truly grateful for the work that he did and, and continues to help me and other people. You know, he's helped guys who've come through, whether it be athletes or, or students, um, especially young black men and women, um, really, progress and advance their life. Uh, I was fortunate enough to meet Xavier when I was in high school and in and, and real dire need of a, of a strong male role model and a mentor. And he was there for me. And I could honestly say that I probably wouldn't be at Virginia Tech right now coaching if it wasn't for him and his impact in my life. I was in the partnership when I was in high school. So when I, you know, was coming back from school, I could just see, you know, he never changed the script. You know, those were his kids. If you needed him, he was going to be there for you. Xavier had a lot of programs and he needed places to put them, so I heard from him on a regular basis. My brother, Xavier, balanced his life very well, um, helping the kids in the community and still being able to help his kids. Family is so important to him. He is always talking about his children, his grandchildren. My dad was really busy when we were little. Choir rehearsal, he was doing things for partnership. He was in all of these organizations and just like always had this heart to give, 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 do, do, do. And then, you know, usually on Sundays was when we'd all kind of come together and, you know, always wake up to 96.3 WHUR playing on the radio and dad downstairs making breakfast. My dad was the one who would, you know, let me go to the parties with friends. Let me wear some of the things I wanted to wear. Um, you know, let me dye my hair, wear nail polish. Um, he kind of <laughs> was the one who was a little bit more flexible um, and the easygoing person. He could never um, punish me or ground me because he felt so bad about it. Everything education was always paramount importance to him and always a focus. So from helping us apply for summer camps when I was 12 years old to applying for college, you know, junior year into senior year of high school and scholarships, it was because of my dad's focus that I was able to attend uh, Duke University all four years on scholarships. So it was a gift that he passed on, us having no student debt and, and, and being able to enjoy our college experience. Lazalia. She was a dynamic, precise woman. In particular, she was brilliant. Her brilliance was something she shared. Even if we were joking around and playing, she wanted to make sure I was talking in the right tense doing things as I should be doing. I just adored her. But my mom was very behind the scenes. I will pray for you. I will support you. I will be patient with you. I will call you out when you are wrong. (laughs) Um, But, ooh, the patience. I can just remember the talks that that Lazelia and I used to have, sitting on the side of the bed. Um, We had a lot of conversations, and I know that, you know, she loved Xavier deeply and loved her children. And she loved her life. And just that smile with those, those beautiful dimples and, you know, her way of, of laying her head back and, you know, and just saying, yes! Yeah! So I can just, I can hear her, I can feel her, and um, I know that they had true love in a special way. It just melded so naturally with who Xavier is. And they became such a great team. He was always so very proud of what she did as a teacher uh, and how she influenced so many students. My aunt pushed him to be a better man and you know, my uncle supported her to be the best woman she could be. He had a praying wife and you know, God ordained you know, that marriage through all seasons of ups and downs. And my mother was a warrior. And that is what I believe is the source of his strength and what I still think to this day motivates him to keep going and keep doing. Even though I want him to slow down, motivates him to keep going. 
I mean, she believed in him from the beginning, and she believed in him up until the day that she left us. And she is watching over us now, believing in this, and I know that she's rejoicing over um, the celebration and that we are giving him his flowers while he is alive. I was a member of the board of directors of Mary Washington Hospital. I gave the, the administrator of Mary Washington Hospital the Xavier Richardson resume. When the new position came out, the job description was Xavier Richardson's resume right down the line. And he got it. I'm fortunate to be able to work with Xavier uh, every day here. You know, we have a set of values that we work through here at Mary Washington Healthcare. We, we coin them our I care values, and that stands for integrity, compassion, accountability, respect, and excellence. And Xavier comes to mind for just about every single one of those values. We see the impact he has on our organization here at Mary Washington Healthcare, but then all of us also observe the greater, broader impact he has in our entire community. I tell people all the time, I feel like I've died and gone to job heaven because it's just the right place to, to be. And I've been able to, to bring that intersection of what I do uh, professionally with what I do in the community. Uh, Xavier was pivotal in getting uh, the community, especially the black community, um, into getting uh, vaccinations. Uh, whether they got in for it or not, he made sure that people were aware of the process and many took advantage of it. So I'm very thankful for that. Tell me how you're feeling right now. I am feeling fantabulous. It's just great. It's, I don't know how to even begin to say how much I appreciate this day. This is phenomenal, far, far greater than my expectations. This is his day, and I'm so happy to just celebrate him as a person and everything that he's setting the groundwork for for later on in life. He deserves this. One of his mantras is to who much is given, much is expected, and he is the ultimate measure of that. I mean, if I were to think of someone who life exemplifies that, it would be him. He is selfless in all of his work, and I think that celebrating that is really remarkable. I believe Xavier's faith is what makes him who he is. It is what guides him. It is what motivates him. It is what drives him. And it is what empowers him. He's a, a Psalm 1 man. <laughs> and so he, he's just like that. He walks in that council of the ungodly. But he's also like a tree planted by the rivers of water, and his roots have really grown. As a teacher, you take pride in your students when they really uh, accomplish things. And personally, I'm very proud of him, Diane and I. I tell him all the time how much I love him. On the strength of everything that he's have done, just in general, or just period. It's amazing to see the things that he has accomplished, and I'm just very, very proud of the way he grew up and the things that he's doing for everyone. Xavier has given the best of himself. He has started at, at the bottom to rise to the top. Just watching him just become and seeing how excited people are, you know, when he's around and when he's able to help and when they see that he's involved. So, yeah, it's, it's a great sense of pride. Xavier uh, is exceptional uh, in, in so many different ways, and I think uh, uh, so many of us recognize that through our interactions and connections with Xavier. I'm excited where we can go and where we can grow from this. You know, I think his legacy will continue on for a long time, you know, and he's continuing to grow it. That's really his legacy. It's really supporting the community that raised him, 
He takes it very, very seriously and he's very honored by the work that he's able to do to help others. If we ever become the beloved community of which Dr. King dreamed, it will be because of people like Xavier Richardson. For someone who is struggling with identifying what their calling is and perhaps even knowing what their calling is and struggling with whether or not to accept it, be prayerful about it. And if it's something that you're called to do and you're obedient, you'll find a way. You'll find a way. But to thine own self be true about it. And I've always felt there was a voice that said, fear not. Because in particular, if you are answering the calling that you have been given, you should worry about what would happen if I don't answer the calling. Fortunately, I'll never know. I love Xavier, and he's such a fine example of a young man. Well, he's an old man now, but... <laughs> you hear that, buddy? You're old now. 